Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome back, my dear audience. Liz Soria here, your host with the Tax Advisor and Biz Coach Success Podcast. Today, I have an amazing, well, guest joining me. And this is really an exciting um, episode because I'm not familiar with this topic. Some of you might be. And she is an expert in using Pinterest. Um, so we're going to discuss today's why use Pinterest for business marketing. Um, so, and I think some of you are going to be really interested. So, no further ado, Catherine Morehouse, thank you for being with us and welcome, welcome to our show. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, as you mentioned, I specialize in Pinterest. So, I got started in Pinterest marketing actually in a roundabout route. I started with an e-commerce business, Baby Clothing, <laughs> which again also started in a roundabout route, you know, studied marketing, then went into becoming an au pair, realized there was a gap in some of the kids' clothing, and, you know, sort of just got started that way. And then I met online entrepreneurs and some people online, obviously, because you know when you get, biz, get started in your business, you have all these questions, <laughs> which again is why your podcast is amazing. Um, Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> It's important because people have questions and they need to go to people who know a bit more, maybe are slightly ahead in business than they are. Um, and that's what I did. So I reached out to a couple of people. I joined some groups. I listened to podcasts and I connected with Lila Higgins. She's in branding. And um, I got involved in her Facebook group. And the one time she went away for a holiday, she was like, would you like to take over the Facebook group? just for the time I'm away. So I was like, definitely. I'd never done it before. So this is something <laughs> that you should know about me. I dive head first into things I've never done before and I'll just go with it. <laughs> so um, I encourage other people to try that as well. It's quite, quite a fun experience. But yeah, so I did that and she got back and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And what happened was I actually sent an email to her and I just thanked her for the experience. And I said to her, is there anything else you need help with? Just because I thought, you know, it's really good to connect with people and see how I can give back and how she can help me, you know, kind of network together and collaborate. And she had mentioned she was looking for someone who could do her social media for her, social media marketing. Now, she knew that I had a degree in marketing and business, and she knew that I had my own business already. Um, so I was doing my own social media for it. And I obviously then took over her account. So I said to her, you know what, I'll think about it. And I just spent the day researching, looking into it. I'd never ever thought about taking my marketing expertise that I had from you know my degree and everything and actually applying it to other people's businesses, not just my own. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so I kind of, I dived into that and I said to her, you know what, I'll go for it. Because we're still the very beginning stages of that business. And I thought, I'm still pretty young. Let me just open the doors to as many avenues as I can and see what I'm really passionate about and I really enjoy. Um, so my husband said, go for it, because he also works for himself. And so he was like, just go for it. Just give it a try. After a month, you'll know if it's for you or not. So I dived headfirst into it. And after the first month, I literally was head over heels in love with marketing online. <laughs> so <laughs> I said to her, I would really love to continue doing this. And I obviously did this for all social media channels. After a couple of months, I had I was basically booked out with social media marketing, and I started to realize that I really loved Pinterest, and I had I enjoyed that a lot more, and I enjoyed the platform because of what it did for my clients' content. So instead of writing a blog post and putting it out on Facebook and then having to come up with new captions and new things all the time, I was able to put something up onto Pinterest and simply repin it without a new description, without a new caption, without new ways of you know, getting people to click on it. And what I really found interesting was a year later, um, I had a pin that I put up there, so a blog post, for example, and I was still getting most of the traffic to her website. Really? And then wow. pin, yeah. And a pin that she had for two years before I even started with her was her top performing pin. And it was getting loads and loads of traffic years later. And all that we were doing was simply repinning it and sharing it across Pinterest. No changes, no updates, nothing. Now, obviously, you can update the blog post if you want to, but it was it just changed my mindset around how you can leverage your content. So, again, I came to a point where I was like, I really love this, but no one is going to hire me just for Pinterest. There's no way, absolutely no way, you know. And then obviously, all the people I connected with online, and um, I had some 
mindset coaches who I was friends with. And said, like, never say never. <laughs> you know, like never say never. You know what's <laughs> and, and, and I kind of want to kind of interrupt there for a moment, if you don't mind, Kathy. Sure. Is the fact that and you do have a strong background in marketing because that's what you you know you, you, your 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 career is about. Um, and like you said, they, they you feel that somehow there was a difference between what we consider the old traditional marketing. Um, because we do have a variety of our audience. A lot of them are millennial generation like you are, and then the other ones in X generation more in closer to my end. Uh, so with that said, um, you know, we were more used to, well, having the printed media, which means the magazines, which they still exist, obviously, and, and they're still working. Um, and we have the newspapers, right? And uh, all those um, billboards that we see around uh, the highways. So. That's what we consider the traditional old fashioned marketing. But now with the social media and so many platforms, and this is part of the reason why I'm bringing you to the show because uh, I'm personally, myself, I don't even have a Pinterest account. Okay, and, and, and I would imagine that some who are listening to this or watching, you know, for a YouTube channel, they probably do have, maybe they don't need it in the same boat I am. Uh, what would be your suggestion based on how well it has worked for you? Um, that actually, let's do, let's think about this in a way where, what would you tell someone who doesn't have an account? Um, is it worth for them to go in? Is it saturated? Is it too much competition right now, Pinterest, for somebody coming in and establishing their account? And um, what would be your tips on, on that, someone that's starting fresh and new and then versus to someone who's already uh, have an existing account, what can they do to improve? So I'm throwing you two things at once. I know. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> exactly. And I, I love what you mentioned about the traditional marketing versus this new age marketing. And what I love is they both work so well together. I was talking to my husband the other day, we were watching television for the first time in ages and you know, cause of Netflix, you just, you, you know, and then there was, there were ads and we went shopping and I was like, do you remember that ad, that ad, that ad? And it's crazy because people think it doesn't work anymore, old age marketing or uh, traditional marketing. Let's not call it old age because it works. It still it works. works. And they both work so well together. So I was really surprised how, um, you know, traditional marketing and new age marketing work so well together. But in terms of Pinterest, I mean, if you're getting started, it's a great time to get started. There's never a bad time to get started. Just like with Facebook, if you're starting a new business, you would start a Facebook page, you know, because presence online is important and it's not going to diminish over time, no matter what the competition is, it's not going to diminish over time. So you I want to be you. sure that you get in on that because things are going to adapt and change. We're obviously going to, let's say in 10 years from now, I'm going to be saying that social media is traditional marketing, including with television marketing, and there's going to be something new. And that's the exciting thing about marketing is there's always going to be something new. And there's no reason why you shouldn't get in on something, even if it's saturated, because you could get so many people telling you the property market is saturated, don't buy now. This is saturated, don't do this now. This is email marketing is dead. It still gets me the most core sales I've ever had. So <laughs> it's like okay. you have to take a step into the marketing platform that you feel is going to leverage your content. That's what's important, because if you're going to do it properly, and if you're going to really dive into it and let it work for your content, it's going to perform for you. Whether that's Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, whatever it may be, there's no reason not to dive into it. You just have to be fully ready to dive into it and say, I'm going to use this channel. I'm going to learn what I can about this channel and I'm going to make it work for me. So with Pinterest, the great thing, if you're starting brand new, I've had clients that I've worked with since the beginning of the year with brand, brand new accounts. Now, the brand new accounts, yes, it takes a bit longer for it to establish itself compared to if you've had one for years, okay? But that's just the standard. If you've had an account for years, Pinterest knows that you are a valuable content creator. You've shared a lot of content before, so you're going to have a higher reach. And um, I'm sorry to stop you there for a moment, Kathy, but for yeah. people who are not familiar, like say, including myself, uh, what is the difference with Pinterest versus to, and I hate to you know, do any competition here, uh, but a comparable is important, to Facebook versus to Twitter, for example. Okay, so Pinterest 
is a visual search engine. So it's very different, a very different social media channel. Um, I generally don't call it a social media channel because it's a search engine. So if you think of it this way, it's like Instagram with the visual appeal. And it's like Google with the search engine. So I always say it's like Instagram and Google had a baby. And that is. Ah, I like that. I like that. That's a sweet one too. Like a baby. I know. Because, exactly. Because it's a visual search engine. So you have the visual element, which is the pin images that you see on Pinterest. And then you have the search engine, which is the power of keywords and words that are um, used behind these images. It's the, the way that your search engine functions. So on Pinterest, you'll go onto Pinterest and you'll type something in. Right. You'll search for something. Okay. And it will produce results. And those results will come up as visual content. So pin images. So if you In, take, I'm sorry, yeah. is that what they call infographics? Infographics? Well, no, they call them pins. Pins. Because, okay. Yeah, they're pin images. So think of it like this. When Pinterest started, what they wanted to do was, you know when you used to have a cork board and you used to pin magazine images onto it? Right. That's what it is, except an online version. So that's that's the concept. Pin. Yes, that's the concept. You pin an image to a board. So it's kind of like your cork board, but it's a virtual cork board, okay? <laughs> With ideas, inspiration, all of that. So that's a pin image. Now you can add infographics to Pinterest, okay? Infographics are just really long and they contain all the information on the image. So you can add that to Pinterest if you want to. But in terms of the difference between, let's say, Facebook and Pinterest, like I said, um, Pinterest is a visual search engine. So if someone searches for something on Pinterest, whether it's, okay, let's go with a simple one, for example, um, a baby beanie. They're looking for a baby beanie. So they're going to type in baby beanie and hit enter. What's going to show up is pin images. Those are going to be the search results. And you're going to be able to see whether you like what you're seeing, if you're going to click through, if you're going to visit it, versus Google where you have a text-based result. And you have to decide if the headline captures your attention enough. So now you're competing image-wise versus text-based. You know what I mean? Um, but the great thing is with Pinterest, what you need to succeed on Pinterest is content. Okay, so it's not about um, you know creating a new caption or engaging with your audience in terms of um, commenting and liking and doing all these different kinds of things. What Pinterest is about is putting your content up there, and you have to have content to put up there. That's the only you know reason why you would use it. You need to actually have something to put up there, but it's going to stay up there for a long period of time. You can, it can go, basically they say evergreen content, meaning it's going to be available forever. Interesting. <laughs> um, Interesting. So then you want to put that up there and that can, with a repinning strategy over the next couple of years, you can still get leads or traffic to that blog post or to that product service page three years from now, four years from now, five years from now, without creating a new description, a new caption, a new anything. You just repost it again. It's called repinning. So, so you can repin. Uh, I'm sorry. You can repin all content. Is yes. That right? yes. Yes, and you should. That's part of your pinning strategy. You should be sharing your content. But the great thing is, unlike Facebook, for example, you may have to create a whole new caption, try and entice them again. For example, you know, it's you don't have to do that. And also, say for example, on Facebook, you post a blog post with a nice little caption, trying to get people to click through it's going to go down on the feed and you're probably not going to get any activity on that post again. Yeah, you're absolutely right. right. You're true. Yeah. true. You're going to post again, maybe in a month, you're going to post the same thing again and hopefully you'll get a bit of traffic. But that older one that you posted, it's not going to get any traffic. Now on Pinterest, if you add a pin and then you repost it again to another board, both of those pins can still get traffic years later because it's a search engine. So what happens is, when someone types something in, if that old pin had the proper keywords associated with it, it can show up in the search result, no matter how old it is, whether it's from 10 years ago, one month ago, today, whenever it is, because it's a search engine, it produces or it shows up in the search results. Thank you for explaining that. I, 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 like I said, I was not aware, and, and I would imagine this, you know, like I said, some of the audience is not aware neither of this, especially if we're not utilizing Pinterest. Um, uh, so that's a huge benefit because again, I mean, I understand the content is the king, right? And you have to constantly be putting things up there, but you're right. Sometimes you, you know, you can hire the best people out there if you're marketing like yourself, 
But you know, a lot of this marketing content and and and, 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 and blogs and everything that we do uh, is sometimes you know the the time that you capture people's attention. It's so short, right? Is it like three seconds, six seconds now that people with the span of concentration that people have just to look at something and say, oh, yeah, I like it. I don't like it. Okay, it's gone. Um, exactly. But Pinterest, that's a very interesting uh, thing that I was, like I said, not aware of that yeah. you can put something and pin up there and, and serve like your image and it can stay there for a long time because that's the difference. It's a search engine. And I like your explanation. It's true. Facebook, you can put, uh, you know, uh, a blog, you can put an image and within maybe even, I don't know, a few minutes. A couple of hours, yeah. You, it's gone. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, Facebook is still really good. And, and you, this is an important thing for everybody to realize throughout time. It's not going to change. Okay. That there is always a specific platform for a specific purpose. Okay. So Pinterest has a great purpose in bringing you traffic over the long term consistently. But it takes long term growth for you to reach that point. So in the first month, you're not going to get a lot of traffic. Maybe in the second month, you may get a little bit more. But it compounds over time. So in five years, you're going to be getting consistent traffic growth and things like that. I mean, even in a couple of months, it's not saying that you have to wait five years, but what I'm saying is it compounds like that. Now with Facebook, it's a really great tool for engagement with your audience. Facebook lives, being able to be there in real time with your audience, knowing exactly what they want, answering their questions. That's a connection platform. It's a place where you make a connection with your audience. You don't, you're not trying to use Facebook just to blast out a message. No, you're trying to engage. And that is what the platform's purpose is. Instagram is a visual side of that. You're trying to engage through images. You're trying to get them to um, feel what you're feeling. It's behind the scenes. It's, you know, those kind of things. So each platform has a great purpose and the right time in your business to be implemented. But you just have to look at it that way. So when I look at Pinterest, I know when I'm, thinking about I need traffic to my site I'm working on Pinterest because that's what's going to get me traffic in the long term and uh, that's a great tip I, I like I said I mean this is all new to me <laughs> um, and in that and, and we just kind of touch base a little bit for uh, the new uh, you know users who are thinking and hopefully they will I might even you know also you know, talk to my marketing person and, and see if they, they, they might establish a Pinterest account <laughs> of yours. Um, because I don't have neither an Instagram. For example, I don't have an account on Instagram neither. Mm. So let's talk about a little bit about the, the difference. Um, so what, if it, it is an imaging kind of platform, Instagram, how is it different to Pinterest then between the two of them? Between Instagram and Pinterest first? Yes. So Instagram, you're going to post an image with a caption. And if you want to lead them to a piece of content, you have to send them to your um, bio where there's a link, you know what I mean? Or something like that. Now, and, and then also when you scroll through the, um, the Instagram feed, you aren't going to be able to go to that piece of content on their website because the bio link will change all the time. Now with Pinterest, okay, so these are just what, this is just one example of a difference. Pinterest, each image is attached to a URL. Okay, so the pin image wow. leads them to wow. a place on your website, your YouTube channel, video. So you don't just have to put your content from your website on there. You can put your Facebook lives on there, you can put your YouTube videos on there. The biggest thing is just creating a really nice Pinterest image that you can then attach the YouTube link to. So for example, this interview we're doing, right. um, what you would do is you'd create a beautiful Pinterest graphic describing what we're talking about. So people are like, I want to watch that they'll click through and it will take them to the YouTube video or it will take them to the podcast episode and um, to the specific podcast episode and to the specific YouTube video or Facebook video or blog post or product on your website. It is linked to a piece of content. Now you can upload without linking it, but people get really annoyed when you do this because they are trying to find some content. So people are on Pinterest for inspiration, ideas, knowledge, all sorts of things. And they want to be able to, if you show them like a DIY thing, they want to be able to go and do it and get the tips on the website. If you've got a product and they want to buy it, they want to go to that product, not to your store in general, to the actual product link. And that's what Pinterest actually does. It leads them. 
So similar to Google, where you search something, it's going to give you a text-based result, but it's linked to a blog or it's linked to a product sure. or something like that. Because it's a search engine. Yeah. That's how you explain it. That's the big, big yeah. difference. Wow. So like yeah. I said, I'm learning a lot of new things here with you. I really appreciate your wonderful tips and, of course. and really <laughs> definitions about all these kind of things. Because like I said, I'm a little more from the old school and the previous generation. So I'm still learning a lot of things here. Um, and we talked a lot of good things about, you know, people like myself or others out there who wants to go and jump into uh, the Pinterest. And I think, by the way, it's unbelievable, really, because if you can link one of those contents and yeah. they're there, I mean, that's an incredible traffic that you can constantly get no matter how old it is. Now, what about the people who already have accounts? Anything that you can specify for them, how often they need to be posting, or what's a little secret sauce there going on uh, in Pinterest that you think can help, um, especially for small business owners that uh, maybe not yet, they cannot hire you yet, but they will because once they see the, the, you know, the, the interview, uh, they know there's plenty of experts out there, but I think the ones that are really getting good results like yourself are the ones who we really want to hire, right? Because everybody can say, I know how to do this, I know how to do that, but unfortunately, they lack an experience or perhaps even you know, a good skills and in, in, in the platform. So what would be your tips, if you don't mind sharing with us, Catherine, when it comes to uh, people who already have existing accounts, what can they do um, to promote it, to bring more engagement and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, a better exposure? Definitely. So if you already have an account or you're starting a new account, so if you already have an account, what I want you to do is I want you to take a step back and take a look at your account and see what you have created. Because often the biggest mistake I see people make, especially small business owners when they get started on Pinterest, is they create a Pinterest account that attracts them, okay? They really like certain things and they find that Pinterest is great for recipes or great for DIY. Now, if you go to my Pinterest account or to my client's Pinterest account that's maybe in social media or branding, there are no recipes on that account. <laughs> like there's no recipes, why? Because my ideal client isn't coming to me for recipes. They're coming to me for marketing. tips. So I need to attract them in the marketing sense and I need to find out what is going to attract those ideal clients. Um, it's not about attracting me to my own profile. It's not about me creating this ideal profile that I like. It's all about your ideal client. And the problem is when you focus on yourself and what you like, you're just going to be attracting people like you who may have the skills you have or who may be interested in what you're interested in but they may not be interested in what you actually have to offer. Great so what, point. Great point, Kathy. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. And the one thing that you need to do is you just need to identify specifically what your ideal client actually wants from you and what they're looking at from you. Now, how do we do this? Okay, this is one of the biggest things because it's search engine. <laughs> well, there's a million dollar question and the second million dollar question. So go for it. Come on, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> Okay, so with Pinterest, the great thing is um, Pinterest has made it very easy for users on the platform to actually use the platform. What they've created is something called the guided search. So what happened is people were typing in certain topics over and over again and following a very similar search pattern. So maybe I would type in baby beanie. The next thing I would type in is blue baby beanie. And then I'd be like, blue baby beanies for boys. Like I would just keep typing in the same, like that kind of, sentence and so many other people were doing exactly the same thing so what pinterest did was they what they did was they created these the guided search which is little blocks you'll find underneath the search bar when you hit enter that guide you in your next step just to make it easier okay for the pinterest user so if i typed in baby beanie and i click enter in the search bar on pinterest i see these little blocks appear underneath and they'll have words like boys or for girls or blue or something like that and when you hover over it, you'll see it says boy beanies or ba boy baby beanies or blue baby beanies. And those are keywords that we are all typing in. And they've found out from obviously this data research that so many people are typing in the same thing. So they've made it easier for us to then click on that button and it takes you even deeper in your search. It automatically adds in those words into your keyword search. Now, as a marketer, this is a gold mine. <laughs> yes, it is, absolutely, because those are what we call, uh, for some of us who are a little more familiar with the special Google search engine, search. 
pretty much the same. I mean, what, because sometimes when you go into the search uh, box and you type, like you say, any specific word, if it's a single word, sometimes they give you this uh, other um, alternatives of what other long, I think they call it long tail keywords. Thank yeah. you, long tail keywords. Exactly. And, and so what you can do is as a business owner, you can find out firstly, what topics do you cover in your business? Okay, so what is it that you cover and what products do you offer? What services do you offer? What categories are those in? Then you will take one of those categories, very broad term, for example, me, I would go with social media. Even though I'm just Pinterest, I'm going to start out with the broad term social media and see mm -hmm. what people are actively searching for. So I'm going to type in social media into the search bar and hit enter. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to be able to see these blocks and see what the pinners on Pinterest have been searching for in relation to social media. What is the most popular keyword and search term they have actively been searching for in relation to a topic that I cover? So maybe it is social media tips. Maybe it's social media posts. Maybe it's a social media calendar. It may even be Facebook social media or Pinterest social media, things like that. And I will start to see what people are actively typing in on Pinterest. And that is so important because that tells you what they're searching for. And you as a business owner want your content to show up underneath those keywords so that when they search for social media tips, your Pinterest tips show up underneath it. For example, that's what I would try and do. If you're a Facebook marketer, you wanna make sure that you are using that keyword, social media marketing tips, so that your Facebook marketing tips show up under that search result because they're actively searching that in that category. And you can type in as many broad categories as you want and you'll find the blocks. The far left one is the highest search term in relation to the main keyword. Um, and then it keeps going and you can just keep scrolling. You can click and you may get more boxes underneath. You just, you can dive deep. And I'm telling you, if you ever have struggled with figuring out keywords for your blog posts, your anything like that, just go to Pinterest, type in the broad topic that this blog post, podcast episode, anything is about, um, hit enter and see what those, those keywords are that are attached to that broad topic. And you will, you will literally come up with 50 possible keywords that you could attach to that blog post in a matter of minutes. That is how much content there is on Pinterest in terms of this, like, or data, let's put it at that much data on Pinterest that is funneled into these guided keyword terms. So it makes it so easy. You no longer have to just guess what they want. You can actually see what they're searching for, which has made it really easy for marketers to, um, to show up in those search results. That's great. Thank you so much. I mean, you know, I think again, I mean, we need to be um, clear that we need to use the platforms that our new generation is using. Um, and we are too, I mean, because even, I mean, we can go as far as baby boomers. I mean, they're using the internet. <laughs> so uh, I think we all have been through a lot of changes and in, in, in adapting to all these different platforms. And like I said, I would even consider doing uh, Pinterest now with, you know, your interview, which I have not throughout this year. I think I've been in social media. I probably much, I think I started like way back in, I don't know, 2008. So yeah, it's been 10 years. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's been a long Oops. Uh, yeah, so it's been about 10 years since I think I, I actually started my uh, Facebook account, my Twitter, and my LinkedIn. And those are the three platforms that I have, you know, utilized the most, and especially LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, so I've been in YouTube, I think, since 2012. Um, yeah, so my channel has Great. been around for a long, long time. And uh, so again, and my podcast just started la at the beginning of last year. So that's the, like, the newest thing. But Pinterest is something I'm considering who always listening to this and watching, uh, you know, the interview by all means. I think it's, it's really worth it, especially the fact, like I said to me, it was new that uh, it works like a search engine, which is phenomenal. I mean, just to know that you can put a good content out there and hopefully that's going to last there for a long time to go on with because that's important. I mean, like I said, we can be putting so much content. If it's not reaching the people that we want, what's the purpose behind it? We're wasting money and time. Okay. And an interesting thing as well, a question I often get, which I think is important to address, what 
businesses can be on Pinterest because that's something that people always ask me. Please and do. Especially, yeah, especially because people assume that it's just DIY weddings and recipes, you know, um, and it isn't. That's the great thing. Thing is it's become a really fantastic search engine for knowledge tips all kinds of things so whether you're a dentist a lawyer a tax practitioner a marketer in any area products travel and anything um, it can be on Pinterest the key is creating content so if you're a lawyer and you've written a couple of blog posts that help people then that content will do really well on Pinterest if you're a tax practitioner and you've given out some fantastic videos about tips, put those on Pinterest with a pin image. Because the thing is that the differentiator is really just the content. You need to have put content out there for people to consume and to see your expertise and then into your sales funnel as we've talked about it, you know. Um, but you definitely want to consider going on there. And the best way to find out if there's a lot of content related to your category or your industry is to just go on Pinterest and type in what your industry is. So just go legal tips or tax tips or something like that. And you will find out what content is out there. Now, the great thing is it's only going to get better in terms of the amount of content available in your industry over the next couple of years. So if you are maybe one of three lawyers on Pinterest who are sharing legal tips for small businesses in blog posts, that's fantastic for you because you can get in knowing that eventually people will realize that Pinterest is a great place to get legal tips. And I know this because I have clients in the wedding industry, lawyers, branding, uh, everything. Really? really? And I have students who are in their 20s, early 20s, all the way up to their late 60s. So um, in my Pinterest course, so it really, that's the thing. It's not age specific and it's not also gender specific because there's, 50% uh, of the new signups each year at the moment are men. So it's not just women. Although women do um, basically contain a large percentage of the people or users of Pinterest, 50% of the new signups are men. Um, and so it's, it's become a really great platform for a variety of businesses. So, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, because actually, yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. I said, you know, it, it would be nice to open up a Pinterest. Is it worth it? And, and I'm glad that you were able to share that with us too, because uh, yeah, definitely that, that would have been a, a, a good question to ask and you came out with the answer before already. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it's interesting because a lot of times in some of the industries, like you just mentioned, like mine or attorneys, uh, you know, or what we call you know, traditional, uh, you know, professions, uh, we kind of hesitate whether or not there's certain platforms that we think that it might not work for us. So again, we, we trying to see what's going to be constructive our time and knowing that there's attorneys already doing this, this is great because you know what, um, they're ahead of the game. Uh, so real estate agents, dentists, doctors, I mean, if they can go on Pinterest because they just, they are, I mean, if you think of it, if there's something wrong with your teeth or you see something, the first thing you do is either Google it or Pinterest it now. And a lot of people go to Pinterest because they'll get a visual result instead of a text-based result. So they can identify if it's a good quality piece of content right away by the image. So dentists are using it to share information and then get them into their sales funnel or introducing them to their practice, especially if it's in a specific area or if they do online things. And it gets them into that sales funnel so that people get to know that specific dentist. And if they're in the area or they know anybody in the area, you know, they kind of get to know you that way. So if they can do it, I feel like any industry can do it. <laughs> no, I agree with you, absolutely. And Catherine, you know, first I want to thank you so much. I really do. I, I'm always very grateful for all my, uh, you know, guests coming into the show and sharing so much expertise and content that I know you're worth, worth you know, worth very much your, your, your value. Uh, how can the audience reach you? Because obviously they're going to need some help. And hopefully you're there to at least, uh, you know, get them started if they don't have an account or if they do, like I said, I mean, at least you can maybe push forward and do some marketing for them. That way they can really see results and hopefully a good return of their investment. So your contact information can you share with us. Definitely. So you can, you can find me on katherinemorehouse.com. Um, and I do have a Pinterest training. That's kind of what I do now. I focus on teaching people. <laughs> so I do a Pinterest course because I know that a lot of people obviously want Pinterest managers. And then also there's a lot of people who would like to learn more about the platform. And so I've created this 
training really that helps you um, set up your Pinterest accounts, do all of that all the way from A to Z. And it's very step by step because I know one of the things I love is that, you know, especially when we do traditional marketing, we're so used to that. And this new Pinterest marketing is very, very new. So step by step instruction is so important. And like I said, I have students from who are in their 20s and people in their 60s who are not tech savvy. So I help you all like through the whole process. So feel free to go to my website there and, and contact me that way. Or you can just email me hello at katherinemorehouse.com. Um, again, any questions, I'm always happy to answer questions because I know that is a great way to sort of get started in the Pinterest area for your business. So feel free to reach out. Thank you, Catherine. It's, it's been wonderful to have you here in the show. And, uh, and hopefully we stay in touch. And uh, if I need help, I'm definitely going to reach out to you. Uh, like I said, I'm in the process right now. So uh, definitely, I mean, uh, I don't know if I have time to learn it, but I mean, definitely, I think some people out there, like you said, there people want to learn. Others, and I call it a do-it-yourself approach, yeah. uh, right? And then there's others who, you know, we'd rather hire people like you that already know. Uh, and, and they can just move forward, you know, with the marketing. And, and again, one of the things I want to end up is that when we talk about marketing, we're talking about also the old tradition radio, which now is the podcast. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think it's just a combination of little things that we can do um, to have a different exposure and be able to reach, uh, you know, a different kind of audience. I mean, it really yeah. is. Because yeah. people have a tendency of hanging out in certain places and not in others. So... Yeah. But I think this is definitely a, a good, a good um, a marketing uh, for business that have not considered it. So once again, um, Catherine, it's been a pleasure. And, and if for everyone who's listening and watching this, uh, you know, interview, please remember that yes, you want to use uh, Pinterest for your business marketing. It works as a search engine, which I love that word, like Google. Uh, so definitely, that's a big plus. Thank you so much, everyone. And once again, until the next episode, this is your host, Tax Liz Story, a tax advisor and business coach. Thank you, thank you, folks. And we see you in the next interview. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.